Hello and welcome to this video about the very first type-in listing game ever published in the Microuser magazine, Death Watch. This first appeared in the March 1983 edition of the Microuser, a magazine that we've looked at in a previous magazine review video. The game was written by Brian and Marion Clark, it runs in Mode 2, but has a Mode 7 intro screen and high score table. It comes in at just 159 lines of code, which makes it one of the more modest listings, and although written predominantly in BBC Basic, it does have a clever bit of inline 6502 assembly code to speed up the controls of the game. Although the game is freely downloadable from the complete BBC Micro Games archive site, I spent a pleasant Sunday afternoon typing this in myself, and then several further hours trying to get the thing to work. I actually didn't make that many typos, but the listing did nevertheless require me to add my faithful memory copy routine, which I've covered in previous videos. Appearing as it did in 1983, this listing was definitely written under the assumption that micro-owners of the day would have just had a tape drive rather than a disk drive as my own Beep has got, albeit in the form of a GoTech drive with an ADFS ROM installed. Having got the thing to run, what can we make of it? Well, it's a fairly rudimentary shooter, requiring the player to defend their base from a combination of tank and helicopter gunship attacks. You can sustain a number of hits before you eventually die, but if you do manage to make it to a ceasefire, which kicks in after a certain amount of time has elapsed, you get a 33% boost to your existing health meter. This in theory lets you continue playing indefinitely, although in practice the game is a little bit rough around the edges when it comes to things like collision detection. The helicopter gunships in particular are especially hard to beat, on the basis that if they shoot at you, they always hit, and you can't defend yourself from their attack. While it is possible in theory to take out a gunship, they are in practice very hard to hit. The tanks don't pose as much of a challenge, but knowing which one is going to shoot at you is very much a random guess, as you have to just try and take out as many tanks as possible. The magazine claims that getting a score higher than 6000 is pretty good, which I guess makes me a not overly bad player of the game. But is it any fun? Well, the graphics are quite primitive and the gameplay is pretty average. After a while it does begin to feel like work, basically just aiming and firing at targets that mostly don't fire back. While the gunships provide a challenge, the reality is you only hit them if you're lucky. By the time they've appeared on screen it's almost impossible to hit them, so you essentially need to hope that you've already fired off a shell in the direction in which they appear. Another curiosity of the game are the battleships that appear at random on the coastline. These can bag you extra points if you hit them, but they never fire at you, which means that in practice they're really just explosive scenery. As with many a type in listing, the game is okay for a few minutes of play, and there is the satisfaction of getting it to work. At just 159 lines, it's not a massive endeavour to type in, there aren't any nasty data statements to worry about, and the small bit of inline assembler is actually quite helpful for the budding 6502 learner. Indeed, even if you didn't want to understand what the 6502 code is doing, the fact that it's contained within a helpful proc means that you could quite easily lift and shift this into your own programs. The code is well structured, and it's clear that the clerks have done their reading up on structured programming in general. The game exploits BBC Basic and its procs very well, and in general, it conforms to pretty good coding standards. The use of go-tos is perhaps a little clumsy in places, and as a piece of learning material for someone starting out on BBC Basic, it's not the easiest listing to read given the number of spaces that have been omitted between commands. This does help it fit onto just two pages of listing, however, and it reduces the total amount of typing that you actually need to do. As a first ever type-in listing game for the micro-user, it's actually not a bad effort at all. The code is generally well written, making it fairly easy to customise and extend if you wish to. The micro-user article that accompanies the listing actually offers a number of suggestions, but with the template itself, you could easily adapt this to a different theme if you wanted. As a game, it's fine, if not especially exciting, but I have to say that given how compact it is, it's hard to criticise it too much. I've definitely typed in games that ran to many, many more lines of code than Death Watch and ended up with something a lot worse. Overall, I'd probably give this one a solid 6 out of 10. While it may not be the most thrilling game to play, it is a great learning tool, and ultimately that, for me at least, is what a good type-in listing ought to be. I hope you've enjoyed this review of Death Watch. If you have memories of typing this one in, successfully or otherwise, do let me know in the comments. 
Also, if you have other type-in listings that you'd recommend, please do suggest them as I'm always on the lookout for good type-ins, especially those that showcase good programming and ideally result in a semi-decent game at the end of it. For now, I'm going to leave it here and I hope you'll join me for the next video in the series. Until then, goodbye!